you know, you had another interesting insight about happiness that, that occurred to me, which uh, that we don't, we're inauthentic about our signals of happiness. So the one that you highlighted was that it's, you know, not an evil thing to get divorced, but once you are divorced, there's mounting pressure to be so satisfied with that situation that you write an article for The Atlantic, to, to, you know, saying how wonderful it is. And I see a similar thing on Instagram, which is, you know, you've worked your whole life, you've finally got the Lamborghini, you're deeply dissatisfied with it, but you can't say that on Instagram. You need to, you need to signal that you're happy. And I, I don't know why, but like, yeah, there's this, uh, we're so deceptive. I feel like if people were just honest about their mind states, you would watch a really quick reorganization to the things that actually contribute to happiness. But because we're always involved in this deceptive practice of pretending to be happier than we are, there's all of these very strong signals pulling people away from the things that matter. And often they're from the people with the biggest holes who need to post on Instagram, need to write that article, and not the guy who's just meditating with his friends and family because he's he's not so loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the the people who are very good at getting attention, and often you know they they enjoy that attention because yeah they're they're seeking something uh, to fill that void. That's an interesting point that uh, a lot of people they maybe trying to resolve that cognitive dissonance of wow I got the thing that I thought was going to make me happy and I'm mm -hmm. not happy, but in a way they're you know the the sort of the continuation of that pursuit of happiness is to go on Instagram or or write an article <laughs> or something and and sort of get the attention mm -hmm. for it. And maybe that'll make me happy is sort of talking about how it made me happy and getting uh, accolades and likes and retweets or, or whatever and, and, and posts, uh, you know, people tagging me online. That'll make mm. me happy. And often that doesn't really, it, you know, short term, you get that sort of brief uh, increase in enjoyment, but, but long term, it, it often doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think a lot of our uh, uh, attention and our understanding of happiness is sort of misguided and it's sort of we're we're drawn to these figures online but uh yeah yeah like, like that's an interesting point that the truly happy people maybe aren't uh, aren't nearly as, as so frequent much. in their posting yeah <laughs> you you really just uh, the one word i think helped me figure this out to a degree um, attention you know like a child what does a child do when they're starved of love and connection they seek attention and so we don't figure that game out as children we can become adults who substitute the seeking of attention for the deep connection and being seen that we d desire you know what that guy with the lamborghini who is not feeling well probably needs is someone to see how miserable he is and love him through that but he never figured that game out because the only game that he was able to play in childhood was the attention game and so he continues his whole life playing bigger and bigger games of attention which i you know i've played that game it doesn't i've not got it to work <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it's uh it, it's interesting you almost have to go through that um mm -hmm. you know you have to sort of like discover it for yourself a lot of a lot of people you know and it's you know have you, there's this uh, there's this idea of uh you know the the one percent rule on the internet some people uh you know they, they have i don't know if it's the same post but I've, I've encountered this in two independent locations one they call it the one percent rule the other is uh, everything you read on the internet is written by insane people <laughs> and the idea here is that one percent of people on the internet actually produce any kind of content whatsoever um original content i mean you know podcasts tweets whatever you know on twitter it's something like um you know 20 percent of people produce 90 percent of the tweets yeah um and so it's like, you know, 1% produce the original content, 9% of people comment on it or interact with it in some way, engage with it. And then 90% of people are just lurkers. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just sort of standing back, observing what's going on. And, uh, and yeah, that 1%, you know, uh, so 90, 90 or 99% of people are watching this 1% of highly unusual sort of probably out on the, you know, the, the, the tail end of multiple bell curves mm -hmm. uh, in terms of personality and disposition and curiosity and interest and, and narcissism and, you know, good and bad. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, charisma as well and all these other kinds of things. Um, and and so we have this sort of mistaken view of, you know, the person who uh, uh, obtains sort of culturally elite status, however you, you know, however you define that, that is going to be a very unusual person. So one, one thing that I've tried to communicate in my writing is that, um, and Jordan makes this point, other people have made this point as well, is that for most people, you know, we, we've been taught, you know, especially by figures who have a lot of influence, that if you want to live a happy life, you have to be a, a rebel, you have to be unconventional, you have to take the road not traveled, you have to be, you know, some kind of a, an outlier, uh, a pathbreaker. And the thing is, you know, if you are, you know, an artist or a writer or an intellectual or whatever, a podcast or something along these lines, that can work for you because you're highly psychologically atypical, mm -hmm. most likely. But for most people, their best shot at happiness is to actually follow a conventional path. 
of you know stability and predictability and and finding romance and love and connection and just sort of following those uh, traditional milestones of of a happy life mm. and that'll work for the, most people. It's not to say that if you follow those steps, you're guaranteed happiness. Only that if you follow that sort of unconventional path, your chances of happiness are actually even slimmer. Uh, but the thing is, the the influential people who are unusual are trying to promote the same sort of values that they adhere to that can yes. often work for them, yeah. but it doesn't for everyone else. You know, when I look at, because I, I took a rather unconventional path. I left my job, I went abroad, started an online business. And what, there's been a shift though. At the beginning, I was evangelical. When I was uncertain of the path, I made a, everybody had to know about it. They had to hear, you know, I had to talk to knock. I was knocking on doors. Have you heard of the four hour work week? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> right. to everybody. And uh, as I've, as it's worked, I find myself available to help, but not insistent upon helping. Yeah. And I, I do think that that is a marker of somebody with wisdom and a, like you can listen to this person is if they're shoving it down your throat that's a compensation for a lack of security with their own choices and the way that they've made things happen if they're yeah. available though and you ask and those I'll, I'll open up i'll share with you that has proven to me to be um i don't know i see it in myself it's like oh and it's also just a litmus test for me to go am i secure in this well i'm telling everyone about it so probably not i'm probably trying to build i'm trying to build consensus outside of myself so that i can quell the internal dissonance that i feel and uh yeah, yeah. that's been that's been that's an such important a good thing. point yeah you yeah, know i've had i've had the same the same experience of um you know like i've, I've gone through that that uh uh you know, the steps of trying to like foist advice upon people. Like, you know, I found the, the key, I found the path, mm -hmm. I found the thing that that's helped me a lot. And then, yeah, be, yeah, become evangelical and start promoting it. And, and most people, you know, I, I find that most people should have most open to influence. If, if you take a sort of a light touch, if you, mm -hmm. you know, sort of maybe gently suggest once in a while, but don't foist it or, or just live your life and yeah. sort of your actions and your success speaks for itself. And then I've noticed like more recently in the last couple of years, especially that people are, are asking me now, like, you know, people who I wish I could have helped years ago, but mm -hmm. they weren't ready for it. Now they're coming to me and that's fine. Um, but yeah, that's something I, I learned the hard way is sort of foisting advice on people definitely does, does not work. 